This is a Land Rover Discovery 4. It's a 3 litre SD V6 HSE Luxury. It's a 2012 on a 62 plate. It has a full service history and has done 56,004 miles. Um, MOT until the 21st of December 2018. And uh, the fuel economy. Urban 28.8, extra urban 34.9 and um, combined is 32.1 north 60 time of 8.8 .8 seconds thank you <laughs> and a top speed of 112 miles per hour road tax which i don't think anybody's going to be worried about uh, buying one of these but anyway it's six months 286 pounds and 12 months 520. Um, great spec great car to drive I'll uh, take you for a ride now, just after I've told you about the service history. It seems to have got busier here than I don't know what. Um, as usual, when I, when I try and film anything, people come from all over the place. Right, so we've got um, in 24th and 9th, 2013 at 14462 at Stafford Land Rover. Then 29,950. 23rd of the 9th, 2004, Stafford Land Rover again at 39,058 miles on uh, the 16th of the 10th, 2015 at Guy Salmon Land Rover. And then the last owner has had it serviced by this chap, J Mobile. Um, 45,886 miles at uh, 7th of October 2016. And then on the 7th of November 2017 at 53171, so less than 3,000 miles ago, again J Mobile. Um, now, a, a lot of people think that having a car serviced at a main dealer is the be all and end all. However, having worked at numerous main dealers myself, I do know that quite a lot of the time the routine servicing. And the boring stuff gets given to apprentices or, or young lads so you, you're not really the, the this mobile guy started up his own business his reputation or his business depends on his reputation and this previous owner has gone to this chap three years so he's obviously done a good job for him he's obviously pleased with it and a, an experienced mechanic has been servicing the car so don't let that put you off buying a, a car if it's not being serviced by a main dealer. It, it isn't the be all and end all. It's nice to see the stamps, but believe me, when you see the people who do the routine servicing, it's, uh, any, you know, anybody could do it, um, in my opinion. Right, so it's got the uh, rotary gear selector. It's got, um, Keyless, igni keyless ignition, keyless entry, that's the key. We've got two keys for it. And uh, here we go. There's the start. Gear selector comes out of the center console. This has got TV as well. Just one second, it's got electric memory seat, electric height and re reach adjustable steering wheel, power folding door mirrors, the memory seats are here, and uh, there you go. This is where I usually get crushed. <laughs> right, so that's uh, one of the previous owners. I assume that's a, a, a lady. Uh, I've just set the seat for myself, and that's, there you go. Although, actually, I would like that steering wheel down a little bit. So, off we go. Beautiful cars to drive. You can see everything in front of you. Um, I normally drive a, a Range Rover Sport, and for the last couple of days, I've been using that Audi at the side there, Audi A6. Coming through town in the traffic, uh, it's a nightmare in a Range Rover or Discovery. You can see above all the cars, you know when they're gonna stop. You know when the guy in front of you is pulling up, no, not just the guy, sorry, the guy in front of the guy in front of you is going to pull up not just 
the first time you see the brake lights on the car in front and you have to slam on so we've also got paddle shift like so we've got walnut wood trim it's finished in black um, we've got aluminium door case and uh, aluminium door mirror casings we've got side steps on it it's got the three sunroofs and that's a electric tilt and slide you've got a shade band here to keep the sun off you it's got dual zone climate control heated seats which we'll just put on then you've got here on this center panel your ter terrain response switches you've got cup holders you've got electric handbrake electric windows the front central armrest is huge and you've also got individual drivers and passenger seats adjustable armrests in the armrest there you've got a little cooler and also a, a reasonable place to put your mobile phone got two power sockets you've got a heated front screen which uh, in winter is a real godsend and I mean these vehicles are made for inclement weather There's snow and ice and floods you name it one of these will get through it got xenon headlamps headlamp wash the seven seats they fold flat in the back um, when you fold them out they've even got a fold out headrest you've got two inertia reel belts so room for seven people perhaps in the back two children really or realistically in comfort just put that heater on a bit more rev counter on the left speed on the right in the center there it tells you what's on tv at the moment there you go i can't see the picture because i'm driving nice and smooth acceleration nice and quiet shut that sunroof now just uh, check the wipers they're perfect rear wiper and washer great too car has Harman Kardon speakers um, I will show you how to pay your mobile with it with the audio system shortly the Bluetooth hands-free and uh, it actually looks like we could do with a new rear wiper there which is uh, just smearing at the top Switch that off. Good old cars they were, Honda Prelude. Got rear entertainment as well, remote control for it. So uh, two TV screens in the headrest which is an expensive extra I know I'm going to regret going behind this highway maintenance truck but uh, here we go let's uh, just see 
So there you go, you've got a, a widescreen TV, which will go off as soon as I set off. There you go. It's a highway maintenance race. Very, very, very comfortable cars to drive these. The seats are great. Considering the, car, the size of the car, it's, uh, it's got a good turn of speed, good acceleration. I think the, for the size of the car as well, they're pretty economical. And certainly from, it's always a compromise really between a little car and a, and a big safe environment. Beautifully smooth gearbox. It just the transition between gears is kind of seamless, you, you don't notice, only by the sound of the engine really. No jerks or except driving that van. Get it up to 70. We've got cruise control, multifunction steering wheel. You've got your telephone controls here on the right hand side, cruise control here. And there you go, one touch cruise. And then just increase the speed, get it to 70, and uh, we'll see how many revs. Seventy miles an hour, sixteen hundred revs, barely doing more than ticking over. Very, very windy today in the UK. Not very nice weather. Um, as you can see, this uh, not being affected by the wind. Just lovely to drive. Uh, having said that for the first time I have just picked up um, braking there there's a, a bit of a, a wobble coming through the brakes so uh, I'm assuming that will be this but this is precisely what this we do a test drive on every car that comes into stock before we advertise them and the test drive is, is to pick up faults that you wouldn't pick up on a ramp test and getting the car up to speed, getting the car up to uh, normal running temperature and, and just trying to head off problems that a customer may get in the future. Um, we want the cars to be right when they go out. So uh, we no, no wheel wobbles, just driving normally but if I touch the brake, you can probably see there, it's, uh, it, that's, uh, that's not what, how we want the vehicle to go out. We 
we've just sold my Range Rover Sport. We've got a uh, Vogue SE, which is just being cleaned. It's a 4.4. Um, but um, to be honest, although I don't need the seven seats, I do need the space for all my photographic equipment and the stuff I carry around during the day. Um, I think uh, I think I may start using this one. It's lovely. We've got black leather seats, and we've got the contrasting ivory stitching. Um, You've got the other bit here that I like, the big flat surface to put your arm on and although of course all the driving instructors tell you not to uh, not to do that but this car is so comfortable, so good you just have to aim it, you don't have to drive it, point it in the right direction and that's it. Give it some gas. Just away. If anybody from Land Rover is watching, I want to try the uh, Range Rover SVR. If you've got one spare. just moved a little further away from the garage and uh, I was thinking of using something that's a little bit, bit more economical than a Range Rover Sport or even this Discovery but they're just so nice to drive. Everything's a compromise but usually I think when you do compromise, the compromise comes with disappointment. So th this is beautiful. It just a two-ton car, and it, it just changes direction. The flick of the steering wheel. This is a very bumpy road as well and suspension on this uh, Discovery is still a little bit bumpy but believe me when you come down in just the normal saloon car you can tell the difference. And then you see over the hedges, which you can't do in a saloon car, you can see what's coming uh, on these country roads. There's always something around the corner waiting to kill you, um, which again, you can't see when you lower down. But here, So I've got sport here, which I don't think I've ever used in any of the, the Range Rovers and Land Rovers that I've been driving. Oh, and, and 
this has got another one of my favorite accessories, heated steering wheel. We've, uh, with the, the winter we've just had, that's, uh, the steering wheel's getting toasty already. I've only just switched it on. don't think we're going to have this car for long. It's not been cleaned yet, it's just as it comes in. Uh, it just really needs a good hoover out. I would think the chap, the previous owner, lived in the country. This uh, the steering wheel is beautiful. It's just effortless driving. Very nice and tidy. No wear as such. No scratches that I can see anywhere on the uh, interior. And perhaps a couple of tiny ones there, but that's been hypercritical. Nice airy feel to it with the three sunroofs. You've got there indicators on the left. And your main beam you've got your wipers on the right auto wipers headlights there we've got uh, side head and auto again for the headlights fog lamps well didn't quite mean to do that <laughs> just jettison the ashtray Display in the centre here, as I say, your, your fuel gauge is on the right, water temperature on the left there, distance to empty, uh, it tells you what gear you're in. Sat nav. Got to agree to that so you won't be distracted. Show you how to work the sat nav when we get back as well. <laughs> 